much are these, Mr. Arkwright? Oh, that'll be nine, 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 nine. That'll be nine, nine, nine. That'll be nine, nine. Oh, give us a shilling. <laughs> A, a large slice loaf and a, a tube of instant adhesive. Oh, yeah, you uh, cutting the sandwiches for the Women's Guild Choir again, are you? <laughs> there you are. Sp spread that on nice and thick, that'll keep them quiet. So, you're going to Parslow's funeral? Yes, yes, even though it's uh, very unlikely he'll ever go to mine. <laughs> <laughs> Don't build it, two pounds of sugar, come on. Poor Parslow. Yeah. He went very quick at the end. He went very, very quick at both ends. <laughs> you know, he was in here on Tuesday last. Yes, ordering ale and a large as life. <laughs> What's so large about life? So far, my life's been about three foot nine. So no magic, no magnificence about it. Oh, you mean you, you bought that aftershave for nothing? Oh, dear. Parslow's been married a long time. Yeah. How's this widow bearing up? Oh, Lily, oh, uh, fairly well. Yes. Well, I always knew she drew great strength from the fact that there was a better life to come. With him from Albion Street. <laughs> Aye, but where will he marry her now she's free? There's many a slip twitch the rug and the kip, you know. <laughs> He's snookered. He's looking doomed already. No, he'll not be at the funeral. But I bet if there's one person that's really broken up about Parslow being death, it's him from Albion Street. Why does your I never get involved in these powerful little human dramas, eh? I mean, it's not, it's not as though I'm not available. I mean, you think the word would get about that here I am on the threshold of manhood, willing to be coaxed out of me bicycle clips? <laughs> I mean, I could uh, be lured away from stacking carrots by the first determined mature woman to come along. <laughs> <laughs> well, practically the first, isn't it? <laughs> Listen, have you ever weighed them sultanas? Yes. Well, that's no substitute, is it? <laughs> How old is he now? I don't tell him in case he asks for a rise. <laughs> there are so many problems in life. I sometimes wonder where we get the strength to carry on. You're not carrying on, are you, Mrs Blewett? <laughs> hey, you're not snatching a few forbidden moments of happiness, are you? I'm not snatching anything. Well, that's a good girl. I was talking about the energy for carrying on living, for making the daily effort to put a cheerful face on things. Oh, when are you going to start, Monday? <laughs> oh, I, I didn't think that was like the Mrs. Blewett I knew, though it gave me a moment's pause there when you said that. Yes. I thought, hell, I thought, uh, if lovers walk right in, then that's the last time she's going to come to me for a Dr. Brownlow's a chest of poultice. <laughs> oh! Well, looks like a nice, a fresh day for your funeral, Parslow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for the order for the uh, boiled ham and the buns for the catering. <laughs> Though I must say, if it had been left to me, you'd have had uh, twice as many Eccles cakes for a start. <laughs> no doubt Lily was working on the assumption that uh, you didn't want much fuss. Yes. Well, we both know that's untrue, don't we? But if you have any objections, Parcel, and now's the time to speak out, you know. <laughs> Look at that suit, eh? Fair 50 shilling tailors. Do you remember this? 50 bob, eh? Oh, how about, how about? Bet you I couldn't get one for a fiver now. <laughs> oh, well, Parcel, you certainly went very sudden, but don't think you'll be forgotten, old lad. No. I shall always remember the way you still owe me for that crate of nut brown ale. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know, it's about time that that bread man turned up with them her funds for the funeral. <laughs> I hope he brings the buns for the funeral and all. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Her parcelor never fair fluffed his words, did he? But he has as a source as a snuffed it, doesn't he? <laughs> that what killed him, was it? Elocution? <laughs> Anyway, what time are you supposed to be going out? I don't know whether I dare go out and leave you here alone with all them big words. You've got no head for business, have you? Eh? Your other end's not very impressive when you come to think of it, are you? <laughs> I don't know. Where are we going with our lives? Eh? I mean, the struggle, what's it all in aid of? The morning of a funeral, Uncle, should give you some moments for concern. Well, don't sit on the penny chews. I mean, where is it all leading Look, to? Look, people don't want to eat a penny chew when it's been sat on. <laughs> Haven't you ever stopped to consider about the quality of life, eh? I would do if I have to eat that penny chew. Look at it, it's all bent. <laughs> do you know what that sound is? <laughs> you know what that is? Yes, I do. That's the pipe bell. It means a second's out and let's get some more money in the blue corner. <laughs> no, that is life passing us by. That is mortality. Old age, sickness, death. Oh, that reminds me, we're, get, we're getting very low on mothballs. <laughs> Ask not for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. <laughs> <laughs> Just as long as it uh, doesn't try to reverse the charges, that's all. <laughs> well, aren't you going to answer it? No, it may, may be tolling for thee, they answer it. <laughs> Yes, hello. Oh, yes. Would you hold on, please? Mrs. Parslow. Oh, dear. Hello, Lily. <laughs> it's me, Ark, 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 Oh, oh, how did you know? <laughs> oh, yes, yes, I've, all, I've ordered the buns, love. Yes, they'll be here. When they get here, I'll keep me. We'll uh, pick them up on the way to the chapel. Yes, I don't want to leave this lad any, any longer than's necessary, you see. Yes. How are you coping? Well, yes, you will be busy, won't you? Yes. Well, you must expect to be busy, mustn't you? I mean, it's once in a lifetime, isn't it? <laughs> I suppose Parcel's no help. He's lying on his back as usual, is he? <laughs> yeah. Oh, in the, in the front room, is he? Oh, we've finally made it, yeah. <laughs> well, I, hope he, I hope he wiped his boots. <laughs> eh? Oh, yeah. Oh, hang on, Willie. I just heard her Formula One, the bread man, arriving. <laughs> That'll be your bonus coming, yes. Ta-ta, see you later. Gosh, morning, Granville. Ah, oh, it is. Well, what are we going to do with it? We're going to hold this door open for me, I hope. Ah. Well, we're not going to rush out and, and live every sweet golden moment of it, though, are we? Not unless we go on the shop bike and then make a few deliveries while we're at it, no. <laughs> hey, you're, you're late, you know. Traffic. Traffic, though. Yes, he's that big bollard in Bridge Street that holds things up, isn't it? Then he gets on his bicycle and pedals back to the station. <laughs> It's getting worse, you know, I nearly had a nasty shunt in Loxton. Oh, did you? Yeah, don't tell me you had to swerve to avoid her at the cake shop's husband. I'm not like that, Mr Arkwright. Get off, you drive like a family planner. <laughs> right? You never know when you're going to pull out in the middle of the road. <laughs> now, I'll keep looking in on you. I'm, I'm making a little list of everything you've got to do, you see. You won't be alone for long, so uh, don't worry about it. Look, I'm not worried. You're the one that's worried. Look, it's my business that's at risk if you ruin it, isn't it? What, in one morning? World Water Two starting in one morning. <laughs> now look what that did to the grocery business. <laughs> all right, all right, go on, put that down. Put it down on your list, you know. In instructions for what I have to do in case of another outbreak in hostilities, eh? You're getting very sarcastic, Granville, you are. You think I'm, I'm just a, a dry old man, don't you? In love with a profit motive. You charged old Parcelor's widow full price for them buns. You're a mean old scrot. I sent a wreath. A wreath? A wreath? I look more like a buttonhole. <laughs> well, I can explain that. So can I. You're a mean old scroll. <laughs> Listen, I went and been priced a normal wreath. Then all I did was uh, deduct what he owed me for that crate of nut brown ale. So your own best friend. Well, yes, he was when he was alive, yeah. I mean, uh, me and Parcel had many a giggle, you know. But, I mean, you see him now, he's not much fun. <laughs> You should remember him as he was. I do. Full of life. Full of brown ale. <laughs> Mine, mostly. Now, listen, while I am out, I want you, you to behave in a proper little shopkeeper-like manner. Is that understood? I know, I know, I know exactly. It's a big smile of welcome. 
If he's a cash customer, show all your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, meanwhile, your hand should be hovering just a few inches from her purse. And then you make casual conversation like, uh, <clears throat> Oh, good afternoon, Mrs. Uh, thingy me bob and uh, how's all your little pair for pair for pound notes and 50p? <laughs> <laughs> Money in again. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. That I should I should work on that in impersonation. If I were you, it might be the start of a long career in hospital. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole world outside that door that I've never even sampled. You have nearly had the wrappers off that memorial once or twice. <laughs> I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about adventure, romance, the arts. I mean, I mean, see, when did we last have a natter about? Despair in the works of Dostoevsky. Oh, it man must be ages. <laughs> what do you think of modern theatre? Filth. You see, you see well, what can we talk about? Life, you dozy prong. <laughs> Life. It's all going on out there, up and down the street, in and out the windows. It's not in books. You've got your head for full of intellectual fair for fluff. <laughs> it's an intellectual world. Yeah. And then look where it's got us. Where's my tea? Oh, there it is. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, what do you fancy for your dinner? Well, not a lot. We, we shall be having a bite at the funeral, of course. Oh, yeah. We? Who's we? Well, she'll be going, won't she, but bless her. The nurse Gladys Emanuel. That's what you want, Granville. A fine woman with a with a, a fine big heart, uh, too, if possible. <laughs> Beats all your books. Mm. I suppose it must do, especially if you read a lot in bed. <laughs> yeah, you see, your hands get so cold to hold in a paper back, don't they? But you can get hold of a good woman without your hands ever leaving the underside of the blankets. <laughs> a warm sausage roll. I shouldn't be at all surprised. <laughs> For your dinner. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, I, I won't want anything cold, and uh, not with parcel the way he is. <laughs> I hope Nurse Gladys Emanuel. Oh, put that sausage away at once. <laughs> uh, well, and well, what can I do you for? Two packets of peppermints. Oh, that sounds very reasonable, I accept. <laughs> <laughs> Extra strong, do you want? You know me, Arkwright. Moderation in all things. I say, you have a, a come up a treat, Gladys Emanuel. Meaning I usually look like some sort of slovenly old bag? No, not some sort of slovenly old bag. My favourite sort of slovenly old bag. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. No, I think funerals bring out the best in a woman, you know. I think it is a life's reaction in the, in the face of death. On the other hand, it could be you're just a dirty old man. Yes, it could, it could. I like that blouse you've got on there. Ooh, I'd, I'd like to browse through that blouse. <laughs> One afternoon when it's wet, you know. I'll send it over next time I wash it. <laughs> all right, all right, you win. There you are. Medium strong. Now, are we going to have cash, or shall we come to some little arrangement over the counter, eh? Oh, it's the filthy lucre, is it? <laughs> All right, then. I accept it on one condition that you save me a nice warm seat next to you in the chapel, eh? And not, and not too near the band. I mean, if I'm not sitting next to you, I, sh I shan't enjoy the funeral at all. Well, you are coming, then. Certainly I'm coming. You don't think I'm wearing this suit to impress the bread man, do you? <laughs> I bet Parslow was wearing a better one than that, and he's going to be cremated. <laughs> And uh, not getting rid of this, it keeps coming back into fashion, this. <laughs> the last of the big spenders you are, Arkwright. There's two miracles I've always found difficult to believe. The opening of the Red Sea and your wallet. <laughs> Look, I am trying to uh, scrape together a few bobs so we can have a honeymoon. We're supposed to get married first. No, that was in the old days. Nowadays it's, it's, <laughs> it's all a self-service now, isn't it, eh? <laughs> not round here, it isn't. Oh, very well then. If it'll make you feel better, I'll marry you. Yes. Now, then, name the day. Any but bank holiday between now and Christmas. <laughs> And who's going to look after me mother? Ah, now I've been thinking about that. Now I saw this old film the other night, you see, and about Peter Cushing, he had something like your mother, which he kept in a dungeon underneath the castle. <laughs> <laughs> and it had uh, little red eyes. It was uh, very hairy and it had n no... 
Oh, she's the first person I've met who doesn't like Peter Cushing. <laughs> Yourself, Lily. We'll get the buns in. in a good mood, try to talk her into some, something extravagant for the bathroom. Are you sure you'll be all right? I'll be all right. <laughs> Parkwright and Granville's. <laughs> Of course I'm all right. You've only been gone ten minutes. <laughs> Where are you speaking from? Oh, I see. Does he know you're in his study using the telephone while he's out there preaching? <laughs> no, go back to the chapel. And don't forget to leave the money for the call. Here you are. The telephone's bright red. Hey, maybe you got on the hotline. <laughs> I should get off before we hear another voice on the line. <laughs> Look, I keep telling you I'm all right. Oh, yes, we had a nice lot of customers in all in one go. Yeah. A bus just came through the wall. <laughs> no, 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 no. We've nearly got the fire under control. <laughs> it's all right, don't start stuttering. I'm only pulling your leg. <laughs> That's a nice thing to say over a chapel telephone. <laughs> Little 
you want any eggs, Mr. Wilkinson? So that's the way your minds work in these days, isn't it? <laughs> what way, Mr. Wilkinson? Eggs, Granville. Do you want any, Mr. Wilkinson? If you start thinking about eggs, next thing you know, you'll be encouraging your mind to dwell on the uh, reproductive cycle. <laughs> You'll not find the four-letter word eggs on my shopping list, Granville. <laughs> Give them up, lad. <laughs> Turn your back on them. Keep yourself clean. I do, Mr Wilkinson, I do. <laughs> I'll have two ounces of licorice torpedoes. They'll take your mind away from eggs. <laughs> I'm not against all forms of pleasure. It can be a great burden, Granville, being holier than everybody else. <laughs> but I enjoy it. <laughs> what do you enjoy, lad? Good health, Mr Wilkinson. That reminds me, I want a new battery. Oh, shaver? Torch. I know where to find them in the bushes after dark. <laughs> Eggs? <laughs> oh. Out of wedlock. Oh, them bushes. They soon get worn out. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Batteries. Oh, yes, I expect they would if you lose them like that. <laughs> Next time you feel desperate for an egg lad, pause and remember where it's come from. <laughs> the world's full of nasty places, Grand. <laughs> What do you have with your bacon, Mr. Wilkinson? Fried bread, lad. The wholesome loaf. We know where that's come from, don't we? Uh, that randy little bread man delivers it, Mr. Wilkinson. <laughs> Will you get a move on? You're holding everything up. I wish you wouldn't make these provocative statements. <laughs> be quite like old times for Parslow. He never used to go by without stopping, you know. <laughs> and I thought I'd pop in just as I was passing. Oh, there's no need. I'm all right. Well, I thought you might think it's that funny if I went past the road end and then didn't look in on you. Pardon me. Oh. You'll be late for the crematorium. Oh, it's all right. They can clog on a bit instead of crawling. Hey, we're doing all right, aren't we? Uh, has, uh, has Mrs. Ellis Bear been in for her bread yet? Yes. And did you save them little bread brown rolls for Mrs. Mukherjee? Yes. <laughs> has Hilda's kid been in yet? No, not yet. Ah, well, if he gets uh, troublesome, uh, you know where the drawing pins are, don't you? Eh? Just uh, pin him to the door by his socks. <laughs> Uh, I'll try to get back for that big rush when they all go get off the bus, see? Oh, big rush? It's only four or five people. All at once? I've put years into this business, Granville. Oh, I know, you put years on me. You keep on checking up on me. Well, you know, even when Parcel and me was at school, you know, when we, uh, when we used to discuss the future, it was always the same then, you know. I knew what I wanted. I wanted my own business. But people were like that in them days, you know, you could go for weeks without ever seeing a soul who worked for the state, you know. Nowadays, if you put all the government officials end to end, I doubt if anyone would notice. Mm. <laughs> How did old Parslow want to be? I don't know. I, I, I don't think he knew exactly. But I'm damn sure it wasn't that out there. <laughs> well. You better get going, old Parcelo's getting impatient. Yes, it's all them flowers, you know. They're very bad for his hay fever. That's for me and all. That shop bells never stopped ringing. Half the time it was you. <laughs> told you I don't like to be away from the shop for too long. Oh, in that case, what's all this loose chat you've been giving me about going on honeymoon? Oh, well, there are some things for which I'm willing to make an exception. Uh, have you had an onion tonight yet? <laughs> no. 
What sort of exceptions? Ah, well, now's your chance, nurse. The world is your oyster. He'll take you anywhere. Within cycling distance. <laughs> Chris, then, well, why don't you go out and enjoy yourself, eh, Granville? Eh? Or, well, go out anyway. <laughs> You're always squawking about never having any time off. I mean, the rest of the day's me own. Look at that, it's nearly bedtime. That's true. <laughs> Not round here it isn't. Not if I don't get a decent honeymoon. Oh, well, all right. Well, where do you want to go, then? Tahiti. <laughs> so, over to suggestions. What did you have in mind? Well, I thought we might uh, borrow Dickie Jowett's boat and cruise the inland waterways. <laughs> Where exactly? Well, I quite favour the stretch of canal between here and Mulberry Street. <laughs> huh? Well, don't go all national health about it. I mean, it's all water, isn't it? How can you tell it's such a mucky colour? And if we got all the way to exotic Mulberry Street, you'd barely be able to hear the shop bell. <laughs> <laughs> that old parcel old wish he could go to Tahiti. Listen, where he's gone this afternoon's hot enough for anybody. <laughs> You're not leaving us, are you? I'm going to tuck my mother in. Oh, a pity you didn't tuck her in with parcelo. <laughs> yes, and why don't you come back later and have one of my special nightcaps? He's going out, you know. Oh, I don't think I'll bother. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I'll go out. I'll go out and see what's happening, I think. Oh, yeah. What it must be like to be young. Hurry back, laddies, or ring the bell, won't you? I'm making no promises. Good night, Granville. Oh, don't send him out on his own. Oh, don't fret about me. There's so much to do. I mean, the whole town's a buzz. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, if you're lucky, you can find all sorts of moths to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Street 